Well, joining me now, Richard Johnson is a lecturer in US politics at Queen Mary University of London. Good to have you with us. Good morning. So this damning summary of a report yet to be released, but certainly we really got a taste of it, talks of Boris Johnson's failure of leadership and judgment in holding 16 parties during COVID lockdowns. Will his apology be enough to save him, do you think? Well, I think the report yesterday was a mix of good and bad news for the Prime Minister. It was good in the sense that it was scant and there wasn't anything specific, a new story that we could learn about the Prime Minister that could be pinned on him. Uh, but it was bad news in the sense that this is now carrying on with the police investigation. And I think what was even worse, really, was, that the, uh, was the Prime Minister's reaction in the House of Commons. I think he, he, he judged it wrong. Uh, he, there was not enough contrition. If you were a director of an organisation and even this thin report or co almost covering report came out, it was already saying there are real serious uh, failures of leadership in the organization you run. And the prime minister wasn't really trying to learn the lessons from that. Uh, he came out swinging. He made some, I think, misjudged attacks on the, on, the, on the Labour leader. And what I think was most worrying for the prime minister was that there were, there was, there were very few conservative MPs who had been vocal in their support, and there were new voices who had been vocal in their criticism including the former prime minister and also including MPs from that 2019 intake. Those MPs who really owe their seats to the prime minister's strategy in the 2019 election now turning against him. And he, he has to start to worry about that. And of course, ultimately, it's uh, up to Johnson's Conservative Party to make that final decision and determine his future. So how will lawmakers be weighing up uh, this decision politically as they also await uh, the police investigation, of course, that uh, full report? That's right, Rosemary. So, the, so there's a couple of key percentages here. 15 percent, one five. That's the proportion of the Conservative MPs in the House of Commons who can trigger a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson's leadership. 50%, 5-0, is the percentage who need to remove him. We've not yet got to that 1-5, uh, 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 15 percentage point threshold yet, but word is we're getting closer to that. The Conservative MPs who want to get rid of Boris Johnson are perhaps waiting, holding back a little bit because they want to judge the moment correctly. Because if the Prime Minister wins that vote of no confidence in his leadership, the Conservative Party rules say there cannot be another vote of no confidence in his leadership for 12 months. So then he's insulated. So they don't want to go too early. And I think what they're probably doing right now is weighing up whether or not the Sue Gray shortened report was sufficient for them to, to find half of the Conservative MPs to vote to remove him. It's a secret ballot, so that's important. Um, but maybe they think that they need to wait until the, the, the Met report comes out uh, before they make that move. Maybe that's where they think he'll be at his most politically uh, vulnerable. But I have to say, based on his performance yesterday, based on some of the leadership polling that's come out this morning, uh, things are not looking great for him. And of course, uh, today, Boris Johnson travels uh, to Ukraine for talks with the president there. But under the shadow cast by this uh, report, or certainly the preliminary report. So if the Tories decide to keep Johnson, for now at least, what damage could that cause the party and, of course, the country going forward? Well, this is a, a really important point. You know, since November, the Conservative Party has faced uh, sleaze or corruption or uh, rule-breaking accusations at varying levels, and it really has dominated the political discussion because there's been just kind of this constant stream of new stories coming out. And it's gotten to the point now where it's distracting from the business of government. We learned yesterday the Prime Minister was meant to have a phone call with Vladimir Putin. That phone call had to be cancelled so that the Prime Minister could give his statement to the House of Commons about partying going on in Number 10 Downing Street. You know, he, he, he's got, you know, the Prime Minister says the reason he should be kept, his pitch to the Conservative MPs, is he's getting the big calls right and he's, he's showing leadership where leadership needs to be shown. But uh, he can't do that if he can't actually put this, put this story to bed. 
and, and, and I'm afraid that that's in some ways out of his control now. Uh, the, the actions took place, and now really it's, it's going to be the Met report, I think, that, that's going to be the deciding factor here. Uh, all the while, the Conservative Party and Boris Johnson's personal standings in the polls are dropping. Uh, and, and Conservative MPs are going to be very wary of that. We don't have an election around the corner, but they, you know, they, they, they don't want this to carry on. Uh, and to get worse and worse for them. So uh, I think that he's not in a great position right now. Yeah, the election's not till 2024, so I guess they feel they have some time. It'd be interesting to see the damage that's done in the meantime. Richard Johnson, many thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.